It's time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. And yes, that was a new intro. Let me know what you thought about it. No, I'm not talking about that. You don't know. I redid the intro. Okay. So it's still the same, and then it scratches and goes into something different. It's shortened down. I thought it was too long, too much information. It says we're Cigar Talk. Let's just get right in it. You know what I mean? Guess so. <laughs> Guess so. Bro. You know what? You know I can't say. Nothing. I was like, let's quit dicking around ah, and get the show started. Ain't so, nothing wrong with that. How you been, bro? Hey, man, blessed. We got blessed. Brian Falconer, co-host. We just want to say we're always happy to have you here. Hey, you're here uh, you're the superstar of the show. Go on with that, baby. Go on, <laughs> go on, man. Go on, so, man. Hey, hey, you know what's funny as shit? What's that? Was a week ago, just about now. You busted your ass right there on the floor. Uh-huh. You know how many times I watched that in replay? Ain't nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I, was, I even added to the video on YouTube, I added like these explosion sounds. In, as they say, enjoy your fucking self. I did. I did. <laughs> I really did. So, hey, let's jump into what we're smoking. You got a couple of sticks there, one that's burning and one that's in the dugout. Uh, I'm smoking a Macau of Maduro. Oh, nice, nice. I'm smoking the uh, Padron Family Reserve 1964 45 year anniversary. Guess what? <laughs> You're laughing, but that's part of my top three because yeah, yeah, I smoked yeah. one yesterday. <laughs> I've been saving it. I say, I this, say we got, got these at the same, same time. time. That's been like two weeks yep, ago. I smoked mine yesterday. You smoking yours today? I was like, you know what? I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that for the show. <laughs> and you know what? I'm glad I did. I understand. So anyway, and we're drinking. I don't even know what you're drinking. I was but, drinking Basil Hayden. And oh, I that's asked. right. You were drinking Basil Hayden, and I'm drinking. I'm um, killing the uh, Old Forester. It's dead. Hundred proof. It's just straight bourbon whiskey. It's dead. No, Talk it's about not killing, dead. bruh. That's not enough to stay alive. <laughs> It's enough to keep me going. No, it ain't. So, <laughs> no, it ain't. anyway, guys, this is enough to keep you going. Well, yeah, we have we have backup. Oh yeah, we have backup. Oh, yes. We always keep backup. Oh, Cigars, yes. bourbon, coffee. We got backup. Backup. So, anyway, what's been going on in your week, man? Work. A lot of work. A lot of work. Coming back. Coming yeah, back. you were off for two, two weeks. Two and a half weeks. Man. Wow. Yeah. I come back and. Dude, I, if I was off for was two and a half a weeks, the company would probably fold up and just then go out of business. You're that important? No, I'm just messing with you. They, <laughs> I'm not. They're like, <laughs> nobody even knew Rob was gone. I came back to over a thousand emails. I was like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. I always do that. Oh, and man. I used, yeah. Ooh, I, that's not the fun part Ooh, of vacation no. is returning. Uh, Usually, I get pretty depressed the day before. <laughs> Before I think about like, do I really want to live? <laughs> Dude, do you get depressed when you come back? Uh, when I come back, because I've had I've enjoyed myself. Yeah, you know I, I enjoy myself. And then I come I'm back. The last day, yeah, you like is like, <clears throat> dude. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't want to go back. It's, it's this like, is fun. It's like when you've been out in the general population and then you got to go back in the hole. <laughs> no, I don't know Solitary about that. Confinement, I don't you know. know that. Oh, it's brutal. But anyway, how do you even know that? I'm just, I watched Brubaker. Uh, okay. Did you watch Brubaker? No, dude. Larry, did you ever see Brubaker? No, okay, Brubaker <laughs> was a Robert Redford film, and it was one of the all-time great prison movies Hmm. i mean if you haven't seen it you should find it it's one of the all-time great prison movies okay like it's right behind cool hand i just want to say because cool hand luke to me is the all-time favorite yeah there's been a lot of i mean shawshank redemption was true one true uh escape from alcatraz i saw that that was a good one uh (laughs) what was that what was that uh Pompeii or not Pompeii, but uh, where Steve McQueen was sentenced to life on that island. Papillon. Papillon. Papillon never you seen just, that. Oh, dude, that that was a classic. But anyway, okay. we'll move on from the prison scene. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Let's Please. talk about a couple of our sponsors. We got Case Elegance. Case Elegance. I mean, these guys are raising the bar so high so fast. Man, I left. And I left about 35 sticks in my humidor. I was gone for two and a half weeks, right? Yeah. 
I come back, that sucker was still on 68. It's just perfect. <laughs> just sitting there. I was like, is this broke? <laughs> you know what I do? I open the door for That's a what I did. Just to make I sure. I did. And I open it and, it and it lowered a little bit. I said, okay, you're still working. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, what's his name? Michael Slater. Uh huh. I believe is his last name. Oh, I, I apologize if I just butchered one of our sponsors' <laughs> names. But anyway, uh, Michael did a video like showing you the entire octador. Uh huh. Goes through the whole process of doing the humidification, yeah, seasoning it, yeah. wiping it down. And, dude, the comments were from people who had bought them that loved them and from people who wanted to buy them and had questions, <laughs> questions about, about them. it. Yeah. And I was and I was answering questions. I was like, oh, nobody's answered this guy yet. So, yeah. But, I mean, it was exciting. I see. I mean, when I you see. have a sponsor that's that quality Come level, on now. Come on now. And, dude. Like, I was talking to uh, Big Adam up in Boston. Boston. And, uh, you know, Zeka sent him one as a wedding gift. That's a blessing. And, you know, Big Adam and his big bare hands messing around with the hygrometer <laughs> somehow pulled out the whole thing and blah, blah, blah. And anyway, they he, he, he said something about it and... Uh, it goes by Sandy in the Discord. She saw that, and she was like, oh, we'll send you a new one. And he's like, oh, no, no, it's not a big deal. I did that. Not only did they send him a new one, they sent him a leather two-finger cigar travel case and a cutter. I really don't want anything to happen to mine to get that, but. Dude, but, but the <laughs> to, to understand know that the a company, company takes yes, care of their business. Yes. You know, I mean, how that's, many times, we were talking about this earlier, uh, how many times do you go buy a product and they offer you the warranty and you buy it and then when you come calling for that warranty, you got to fight. There's something. <laughs> you got to fight. You screw <laughs> yeah, up. It's you. But dude, no. Big Adam even said it was me. And, and they what still they say, do, we're still going to take care of boom. you. Boom. Yep, we're still going to take care of you. So that's what it's about, man. You know, you, like you said, the warranty calls, oh, we'll do this. Yeah, right. The first time that thing fall apart like the Monster Mobile did. <laughs> <Right. laughs> you like, you did something. No, I didn't. It right. just it doesn't matter. <laughs> you're not getting <laughs> We're not gonna give you anything back. But that's not Case Elegance, man. Case Elegance isn't even making yeah. you buy in a nope. warranty. That's nope. just how they take care of their yeah. people, man. So yeah. uh hats off those guys and the travel humidor. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Larry's? I'm not talking about the <laughs> Dude, I see him with it everywhere he goes now. Show it to everybody. No, I ain't showing nothing. Come on, man. Don't be that way. He, somebody's got some jealousy going on. But, dude, I mean, the leather on that, that's that's like, supple. yeah, it's supple. I love this, this supple. This dude said supple. Uh, dude, that's how I would call it. It's beautiful. It's, Both of y'all. Yeah, it's manly. It it has it's, everything in it you need. It has a spot in there for your humidification and a little zippered net bag. It has two pockets that you can put a cutter or lighter in, yeah. and then it folds open, and you can have five cigars in there, and it's got dividers mm -hmm. for each one, so they're not in there doing whatever hanky-panky mumbo-jumbo that cigars do whenever you close the zipper and nobody's he's, looking. He's handing me this. Yeah, that's here. that's nice. Well, you got it upside down, but yeah, that's nice either way. But anyway, yeah, I mean, dude, look at that. <laughs> Larry's like getting excited over there. He's changing the camera angle. So anyway, uh, if you would like to see what Case Elegance has, uh, look down in the show notes. There's a link. Go by there. If you order a uh, humidor and use the code Cigar Talk Coin, you'll get a challenge coin with Larry. Larry, put it on Big Boy. You get a challenge coin with F Cigar Talk on one side and their brand Claro on the other. And it's a badass challenge coin. Yes, sir. And so, if you already have one and you want to get ten percent off, just use Cigar Talk. Bam. Ten percent done. And then let's jump over to the leaf. I mean, these guys, I mean, we had two special guests in the last couple yes. of shows. Scott did a great job. Dude, I love to see where Scott started yes. and where he is now. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the the difference from day one to now is now he's my trusted tobacconist. Yeah. It's yeah. like he, Jay and him both. If I was talking to Bill Kalame about this. He asked Jay to put together a 20-stick uh, sampler. Okay. And he was like, because he wanted to get a box, but he didn't want to smoke the same thing over and over. So Jay put together a bag, 
And Bill told me he was like, dude, that dude knows how to put together a bag. And I was <laughs> yes, like, sir. I know. Coming from Bill Kalame, who was the the owner of the league right. before Jay took it over. So it's just like that type of change, not change, but growth in that position. Because like you said, Scott used to be our buddy when we got there and the, when he got there in the beginning. Now he's the tobacconist, man. He's the guy that you go to. Right. You go to him, you walk in the door, okay, what do we got? What do we and he thinks about what your palate is. He walks you in there. He presents, like you said, he presents sticks that you like, man, this is great. This is great. Jay forever is gonna be phenomenal to me. Because no matter what he does, he always he always presents me with something. I'm like, where did you get this, man? Where did and you Jay's get this? Jay's just a special guy. Something I mean, there, there's so much to be said about Jay, and I, I don't want to keep saying it because it <laughs> makes me look bad because I'm not like that. But, yeah, Jay and Scott and Dwayne and Adam, not Adam, Alan, <laughs> Adam, Colton, uh, Casey, all yes. those guys, are, are they're just a really good set of Smoke shop guys, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Great home. Doesn't get any better. And it's a great if you want to go by there if you're ever by Abilene, check out the shop in person at eleven sixty six North Second. Hey, and uh, go by. And oh, I just learned this this last week. What's that? So the Havana room in the back, which is members only, mm-hmm. on Thursdays they let anybody come back there and experience this badass lounge. So I got to meet a couple of people that was new to me this week. Uh, Mike was there. Yeah. And it was great meeting him. And I didn't even know that was him until we'd already been smoking and whatever. And I was like, dude, let me know. I'd like to hang out with that dude. Mm. So anyway, uh, look down the show notes and you'll see the Leaf and their phone number. Call them up and they carry, oh, Noah's Arc Worth of Cigars. They have the massive, massive humidor with, I mean, dude, the list goes on and on. And the way Jay brings in new cigars (sighs) is just awesome. Yes. There is no disputing that. Right. I, I was trying to look up a word that, that I could come up to. There's no dispute that. The way he, he goes out and he finds gems for us. And you walk in that door. He says, I got something new. What is it? And he tells you. I'm like, man, I just saw. I just heard about that. How would you? He said, that's all I do. He said, I yeah. try to find out what, what you guys would love. And I'm going to bring it here if I can. I love it, man. So far, he's knocked it out of the park. Tell the truth. So, anyway. And then... uh I want to talk a minute about a news story I posted on our Discord, and we'll get to that here in a minute. It's about another robbery of cigars, and so we'll get on that in a minute. But I also want to take the time to say thank you to our Patreon members, the Light Em Up crew. Uh, You guys help keep this show coming week after week week you know after I mean? week and so we just want to say thank you to you guys and if you watch all the way to the end on the youtube you'll see their names uh <laughs> all of our supporters we just want to say thanks guys and then uh the other thing that i wanted to talk about for a minute was i watched a video and i don't even know who it was but it was this uh cigar expert I mean, more than just a aficionado, uh-huh. but he actually went through the entire step-by-step of how to smoke a cigar. Okay. I mean, you would think that's pretty basic and everybody knows. No. But it was very interesting, and I actually learned a couple of things that I didn't know before. You? Oh, yeah. I, I love learning new stuff. Okay. Pass on the educational information that is lodged up in this brain. As long as it's not Lubuckian education, I can see it blessing somebody. <laughs> hey, even <clears throat> Lubuckian blesses some. Who? Uh, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> he was somewhere else before he got there. <laughs> well, he finished there. <laughs> so, anyway, oh, uh, one of the interesting things that I was, I mean, I already did this a different way, Uh but the way this guy did it was impressive. And so if you like to let your cigar sit there and when you start yakking and it goes out, yeah. what do you do when you relight that cigar? I blow straight through it. Okay. I I do that. Mm -hmm. I blow the exhaust out of it. Yeah. And then I ensure that I get rid of that ash if it's an ash on there. Right. So what do you do? Just kind of. Tip it no, off, tap I, it off. I tap it off. And then what? I relight. Okay. 
So this is the part that I had never seen before. Uh-huh. But the guy actually took, I don't have a set of keys with me. Uh, I'll use this pistola. Damn. So, oh, he's got my keys right there. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Just toss them on over. So what he did, and I'm, I'm not going to actually do it on my cigar, but I'll show you. It was very interesting. He actually took his keys and he scratched all that black char out of there. To get rid of all the, that was burnt. Back, basically yeah. got it back down to the, the tobacco. Unburnt, unburnt tobacco. Right. Yeah. And he said that way you don't get that funky whatever. I never thought of that. And so the thing that I do when I have my Zycar XO handy is, just cut. is I'll just cut that much yeah, uh-huh. off and start fresh, which yeah. accomplishes the same thing. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times I don't have my XO with me. Got you. If I got a deep V with me, I can't do that. Definitely can't do it. So anyway, I thought that was a very interesting tip. That is smooth because I never would have thought of that. Now, another thing he was talking about that I found uh, something that I have never done. I have, but not for the reason. Uh And so he was talking about, you know, you want to let your ash get to like a half inch to an inch Mm -hmm. and a half. And then don't tap it. Because what happens when you tap it is you have ash going everywhere from the, you know. From the tap. Right. And so what he does is he sets it on the edge and just rolls it. And it's done. And it's done. And you see, that's, a, yeah. that's not doing any damage. No. I mean, it really keeps it almost like a pencil sharpener. That's a good. That's a, <clears throat> I need to see that video. I, I really do. I will send it over to you. Yeah. I was very impressed. And there was a lot of other cool tips, too. You know what? If I can find that video, I'll put that in the show notes so you can click show over and go notes, watch it. Notes. It was actually really good. I think it was a couple of years old. But, you know, information never goes in. I just did it. Yeah, it, it works, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, anyway, uh, let's get into the story with uh, Christian Aurora. And, you know, and I might have said that last name incorrectly. <laughs> I'll get emails about that. But, uh, anyway, with CLE, Asylum Cigars. Yeah. So, their warehouse, someone broke in and stole over seventy four or 75,000 cigars. <laughs> <sighs> Pappy Gate, dude. Yes. yes. I mean, this was this, this was more of a heist, because, not a long term. Well, now, I don't know if it's long term. Because you got to have a, a large truck to do that. You can't get 75,000 sticks in, hey, in your They didn't suburban. take the ball, and they, they said that what they think is they only loaded enough cigars or boxes what would fit in the back of a pickup truck. Hmm. I'm thinking you got that pack that pickup truck <laughs> just <laughs> you know Beverly Hills <laughs> <in> style <laughs> to get seventy five thousand sticks. You got ropes sticks. tied down, yeah, strapped. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, dude, but seventy five thousand. What do you do? It takes time to do that. Three guys did it. It takes well, time to do that. They said there could be more involved, but the video cameras only captured three, three guys. guys. Wow. And so I was thinking, I mean, what do you do with 75? I mean, I smoke them, but I mean, that's probably not why they were stealing <laughs> them. <laughs> Go to the black market, the black dark web, and you will find somebody trying no. to do the dark. Who's going to who's going to patrol the dark web? The FBI does. They can't find everything. Well, that's why the dark web is a way to do a lot of these illegal transactions that they that are being done. Have you ever been on the dark yes, web? Yes, I have. And what'd you go looking for? I was trying to see if my because I got a thing sit t- saying that my social security number was on there, so I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went, so, and I, so I put you're a, like I'm gonna go look around, and I put a fake <laughs> one in there, and stuff started popping up about this person. I was like, ooh. I need to get off here because somebody might be. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop. Yeah. laughs> delete, delete, delete. Dude, I was when like, I got on, wow. I went on the dark web probably about four or five years ago. Uh-huh. You know, I installed uh, Tor. He straight said he is stole. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> installed. <laughs> he just said he stole. Well, <laughs> that's that little bucky. <laughs> Pay attention. So, anyway. Uh, I was just curious as to what it was. So you installed tor- tor- Tor. Tor. Not Torrent. Not Torrent. Okay. Torrent's for downloading shit. Yeah. But uh, Tor is like a VPN. Yeah. 
and it keeps your uh, IP secret, secret. hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, man, I ended up on some website where, I mean, you could buy any gun, any, <laughs> like, no, any gun. ATF. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I mean. You may not have been, though. But that same website, you could buy cocaine. You could yeah, buy. Yeah, it's not ATF. Uh, what else? I mean, it was like heroin. You hit you hit a Sicilian website. <laughs> what but do you dude, need? I mean, like like fully automatic weapons, wow. silencers. Just I was like, holy crap! That would be like, I mean, that gun right there. You know what it's worth? Yeah. Ten to fifteen. I was years. just going to say ten to fifteen, <laughs> fifteen to twenty. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. So wow. anyway, it was it was an interesting period. I don't know how we got so far off track. Talking it, about the uh, the, heist. the heist, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just don't. I, how because we were talking about how I mean, would are they, you shipping what those would they out do of the country? I, what for? Because I mean, they came in the country, so people are easily accessible to these things. But you're still in seventy five thousand. That's that's a lot. Of that's sticks. a lot of sticks, man. So you have to ha- you have to have had some type of. Uh, you know, or, or buyer. Yeah, a market. You had to have a buyer already lined up because already. I mean, you're not gonna and then sell sticks. Just, just, <laughs> just, just steal all of these, and I got to find out how to get rid of them. No, that's not a conversation you had, right? Gosh, man. So somebody planned it out. Now the question is, and a lot of times it is, was there an insider? Yeah, I was gonna say, who's the insider? Because you know, if I always think there is. That's smart because I mean you've got to patrol- know where the cigars are in the first in, place. In, in investigations, the first thing we always look for is somebody on the inside. Right, that's the first thing we look for. Who's susceptible in the ins- on the inside to facilitate this or just be a part of this? So that's going to be your initial thought. But then you go through everybody. That was like that heist with the Cuban. Oh yeah, where. Yeah. He worked for Loomis. Loomis yeah. <laughs> he already worked there. I mean, he understood the process. He gave <laughs> he information. Knew the did you think he was going to get away with he that? Did. I, this is this is so weird because I had a f- associate. I was going to say friend, associate that worked for Brinks. <laughs> really? And he got fired for guess what? What? He stole a box of quarters. <laughs> He was thinking, well, there's no serial number on quarters. Fool, a box of quarters weighs about 50 pounds. Wait, How what, are you going to get rid of that? that? Was, hey, and they caught him at the arcade. Yeah. <laughs> no, at the laundromat. <laughs> he said, I had dirty clothes. I'm like, when we found out, we were like, how stupid are you? He said, but I didn't think. He said, because they don't have serial numbers. But, dude, you got a box of quarters. Yeah, and I mean, I don't even know what's a box of quarters worth. I don't know. It was almost a, a thousand or something. So, so he lost. He lost a good paying job for a couple of thousand dollars. Right. You you didn't think maybe to take a couple of boxes of hundreds? Because <laughs> he, no, he thought they 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 got numbers on them. You still not gonna get away? I mean, if you're not gonna get away, at least have and, a good time. And Brinks, the <laughs> trucks have a plethora of cameras. Oh yeah, not just the yeah. the headquarters. The trucks have cameras all over the place. You have a manifesto. <laughs> I mean, not a manifest. In that manifest, it said you were supposed to have hey, this certain what's, amount. What's the best bank robber movie of all times? What was that one with Val Kilmer and uh, Al Pacino? He, That's he, number two. What's number one? Our town. That was the best bank robber. Our town. Our, or the town. The town. The The town. town. You haven't seen that one? I I can't remember. Ben Affleck. Oh, I it? have seen Dude, it. Dude. I have seen it. My, my, my favorite scene of that movie, and I'm going to butcher it because I don't recite movies, but when he's like, goes in there and he's like, I need you to do me a favor. We're going to some place. We're going to beat the shit out of a couple of guys and you can't ask any questions. And he's like, I got one. Whose car are we taking? <laughs> <laughs> Whose car are we taking? Not mine. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a damn ah. good heist movie. But yeah. anyway, back to this cigar <laughs> heist. <laughs> I mean, let's wrap it around. Get you back <clears throat> on track. <laughs> no I more just, squirrels. I mean, what do you? What do you? What does someone do with seventy five thousand cigars? You got to get rid of them because you can't smoke all of them. <laughs> you would be dead. <laughs> we would. We would be able to say that we know of one person that died because of cigars. Who? I can. Tell you, dude that smoked 74,000. Saka has smoked over 80,000 sticks. 
in his lifetime. Yeah, true, true. true. We're not talking about the next five weeks <laughs> with these seventy five thousand. <laughs> true. I mean, have a party. That, that metaphor would be like, please stop, please stop, Begging. please stop. <laughs> yeah. So it just you know, and what really sucks is. I mean, it was a lot of good cigars that never made it to market. You know, CLE. Yeah. They've actually got some cigars that I've been wanting to try. And uh, the the uh, CLE Corojo. Mm-hmm. I've been wanting to smoke that. Yeah. And they didn't give out details if those got smoking. Check the, smoking, check the stolen. Check, check, check the dark web. <laughs> right. You might find it. <laughs> so, well, hey, man, we're going to take a little five minute break. Mm. Don't worry, you won't have to wait. Nope. But we'll be right back and uh, we'll pour a drink. Hey, guys, welcome back. Hopefully, uh, that little intermittent break wasn't too much for you but anyway we had to put our list together and uh tell you what i don't know about your list but i got some jim dandies that's why i'm going first (laughs) i'm let me tell you something i've got all the information about my picks this week and i actually have samples to show on the camera i'm going all out so you're really going out i am you really i'm stepping it i yeah so those that I smoked, I don't have anymore. So right. I can't, I can't put them in front of the camera and show them off. So that's what I, I see how this. Is I like stepping up a little bit. I you see know, how this is going to be. So what what did you smoke this week? Okay, I mean I know you smoked more than this, but yeah. like this is your best three sticks of the week. And I'm gonna start off with the one I got as a gift today. Okay, today. Yeah. What'd you get today? Black Label Trading Company at Lawless. Oh, that's a great stick. Medium, those earth tones, man. That cocoa and coffee. Good lord pepper at it's, it's like it was pepper at the start of each third and it was like it dissipated throughout and i was like man this is a bad stick man thank you again jay for just pulling something out he's like yeah we got this try it I'm pull like, it down just a little bit i was like oh my god yes he blessed me he blessed me again number two a little bit more <laughs> is the one that we were talking about earlier that you were smoking. I'm still smoking. And I smoked yesterday, which is a Padron 1964 45th year. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, this is a great stick. It is I'm, a great The retro hells stick. are just like bombarding <laughs> with those <laughs> earth, earth tones. tones. You know what I mean? Like, is there anything on earth that wasn't placed in this stick, man? I mean, it was just, it was, it was, it, it was great. That's all I can say because I'm starting to get hyped. And my last was. For those people that are members of the Havana Room at the Leaf, uh, every month they give you two sticks. One of our two sticks this month that I is made my list was the Opus X Arturo by Arturo Frentes. Good, solid stick. You know, me and Ed were talking about that stick, and I said, you know, that stick doesn't really excite me. Mm-mm. But it it's a solid stick that reminds me of what the tradition was yeah. and it was like you take the old tradition of like the old cuban cigars yeah, yeah. and you make it like perfection it's not gonna blow your skirt up with these flavors it's pretty medium it's not powerful but the it's this the, ride right yeah here. it really is this ride right and it's here. and it's solid yeah it's this ride right here from i mean when they made that stick though you think about the cigar out. market they didn't have on the market what they have today. Oh, no. oh no and that's one of the reasons that they did like you know the forbidden line mm-hmm. uh to compete with the newer because a lot of palettes today prefer oh. that Ooh. But I it. like to be where I can enjoy both. And with that one, and we what were we drinking yesterday? Larry brought it up. Early times. Early times. Early times. <sighs> Ball and Bond. Twenty six seven dollars. And it's a hundred proof. Ma- paired with that Padron, I was sitting back there. I was chilling. And that and that is a good whiskey for that Ooh, because it's yes. not too hot. No. It has enough flavor to marry well with that. Opus. And they played off each other. Yeah. The that's entire, a very good trip. pairing. Like I said, I was just like this. That's why I wasn't talking that much. And y'all talked about me anyway. But <laughs> those are my three. <clears throat> he going to say, yeah, for you hear that? Yeah, I heard. <laughs> and I think they did too. So 
my list is first I'm going to start out with Have you ever had this one? The War yes. is. Mm-hmm. You know it's by Crowned Heads and it's a solid stick and I want to say this is like a $7 stick. So if you, I mean, for seven dollars a crowned head stick, you're you're money. You know now, what I mean? Now I got to bring props. And this is a Nicaraguan. <laughs> it has a Mexican Ecuador, no Mexican wrapper, uh, Ecuadorian uh, binder, and the filler is Dominican Republic and Nicaragua, and the strength is one hundred and fifty million kilometers past full. Do you hear this, man? Do, what? Do you, I like the sound of that. Do you? <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. I had two things. First of all, you sound like Ron. What's his name? <laughs> Welcome to San Diego, or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Dude. Oh, from Anchorman. Yeah. Hey, so I had two. I, I, I you know what? I just decided I'm going to take them as compliments. Okay. But I didn't realize this, but. If, you know, some people come to be a Patreon, they support the show, yes. and after they support with so much uh, money, they decide they're going to leave That's for correct. one reason or another. Uh-huh. And I didn't know there was an exit survey. And so you look on there, and it doesn't show who said it. It just says what their comment was when they left. And I want to say 70% of them just said, my financial situation's changed, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You know, can't do it right now. And then the other one was, uh, a real common one, was uh, I decided this is how much I was going to give, and when I reached that point, I left. Okay. Okay, that's cool, too. But my favorite one, (laughs) my very favorite one, (laughs) said, why did you leave the Patreon? And his reply was obnoxious drunk host <laughs> you told me that. i was like wow <laughs> that was my favorite one by far <laughs> obnoxious drunk host and then somebody was like well who was that like really <laughs> really who said who was the obnoxious drunk host i think it might have been me <laughs> You know what makes you think that? neck and neck here? <laughs> You're right. But I think I crossed the finish line just, just a little bit, a nose ahead. Say photo finish. Photo finish. <laughs> you know we were doing shots. No. Anyway, I, I just thought that was funny. But that's your personality. You know, I, I guess that's why you're taking it as a compliment because hey. He, Hit it dead on. It was me. <laughs> so if you didn't like me for being me, okay. I was like, you know, I actually thought. Did you never listen to the show before you signed up? <laughs> Did we surprise you? I'm just going to pay money to this. And they're like, wait a minute. What am I sending my money to? What the? <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it was, I thought it was comical. I loved it. And then I was at the Leaf yesterday, and you all know Preston. Yeah. Preston. Pres- no, Preston. No, Preston, you talking about Preston that was back Preston there with us. Preston in the back with oh, us. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for interjecting <laughs> bullshit. Anyway, <laughs> Preston was back there, and I said something about a job or something, and he said to me, well, we all can't oh, yeah. <laughs> talk out of our asses for four, four hours, hours a and month. And get paid for it. <laughs> I just I dropped like, my head. I was like, damn. Well, he talking about me too. <laughs> so I was like, I was like spot well, on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you know what? We love fun comments. Yes. And, yes. you know, because we give them. We give a lot to All them. day. So, you know, we, we hope this is a fun show that you light up a cigar and enjoy it with us. Gotcha. You. you pull out a bourbon a coffee uh-huh. sit back and enjoy gotcha. the show now gotcha. i know some people are driving to work yeah. so make sure you don't spill your drink but <laughs> you know you got to be careful preferably coffee <laughs> well, either or anyway no so thank you to the people who do support the show yeah, because we come on here and have fun every week and yeah. we hopefully are part of the cigar community uh, that we love yes so give me your next two I wasn't done, but okay. Anyway, my next one 
is uh, I had a whole another 30 drunk, minute rant. Drunk, obnoxious <laughs> host. <laughs> no, my next one is also one of my favorites. This is a, a Caldwell stick, yeah. and it's a little out of the nor- norm for Caldwell because this is a medium plus stick. I wouldn't say that it's full body, but it is definitely a medium plus, and yeah. that is the Caldwell Long Live the King. Long Live the King. That in focus right there. There you go. Yeah, that's, and I love this stick. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of Caldwell, but when he decides to do something a little stronger, stronger. Mm-hmm. I'm always all yeah, over that. Yeah, gotcha. And that is a, uh, let's see, the uh, rapper is a Corojo Dominican. <laughs> the origin is Dominican Republic, and then uh, looks like I cut off the rest of that, but I'm pretty sure it's got Nicaraguan uh, tobacco in there as well. That's what gives it the strength that they normally don't have. <laughs> and then my final, but not least, is going to be the uh, Aganorsa Leaf Habano. <sighs> and you know, me and Larry were talking about a week ago. And he had smoked. And you I all believe, can remember the conversation? Yeah. yeah. I, he smoked the Maduro. And I said, dude, that's a good stick. I haven't had that in a while. And he's like, yeah, me neither. And I had forgotten how good it was. And so when I had the opportunity, I was like, you know what? I'm going to revisit Aganorsa because they do make really good cigars. Are you a fan? I always have been, especially that one. Well, I. I this is one of the first times I've smoked I've had the Habano. That, I've had the Habano a few times. I've had the Maduro. The Maduro, I think, is fantastic. Well, a few times also, but I like the Habano more. Really? I did. I would say it's 50-50 for me. Well, okay. And I have been on a big Habano kick, but their Maduro's damn good. Yeah. So, anyway, that's my pick. So, there's your pick six of the week. <laughs> With commentary. With extra, <laughs> always extra and backup. Oh my long god! As long as you got extra, you got backup. Oh my god! So anyway, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about another interesting news story that's in the cigar sector, and then we're going to talk about the weekly cigar football uh, game that we have going on. If you haven't signed up, look down in the show notes and sign up. Basically, it's ba- you don't have to be a fantasy football player. All you're doing is picking who's going to win based on uh, the spread. And at the end of the season, we're giving away a badass Case Elegance humidor yes sir case elegance you're humidor. not gonna want to miss this opportunity and dude there's yeah. only like 24 26 guys playing so right now if you join in you're not too far behind you're talking a one in 24 shot that's true because one i don't 24. even count one in i can't win uh-huh. so yeah you're talking one in 24 one in 30 gotcha and gotcha. i mean dude let me gotcha. tell you something i didn't even know we were picking against the spread <laughs> The point is, hey, I haven't like even I got picked, a chance. I picked Tampa I, Bay to win, but because the Cowboys covered the spread, I got no points. You got no points. And I put yeah. all my eggs on that game. I was like, <laughs> I'm predicting that one is my best one. And it didn't work the way you yeah, wanted it but to. but the Cowboys won the day. We'll oh, talk anyway. about that after the break as well. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back after a quick break. Hey guys, thanks for hanging through the break, and uh, let's talk about our other sponsors. We have McAuliffe Cigars. McAuliffe. You know, they had their open house weekend last weekend. Yes, we sir. know several people that were there, and they had a ball. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, talked to Orlando, and dude, he was like a puppy coming home. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But anyway, uh, if you, if, I mean, I don't know where you've been if you haven't tried cigars from McAuliffe. You have to be somewhere I where mean, it's just so close. Fold a forty-two dollars. Oh, he got it. <laughs> and I'm talking about every blend you could have for different guys. Yes. If, I mean, if you're on a journey. I would smoke the entire line because you're going to get so many different experiences. Uh, and then go through again. Oh, dude. Because you're going to get different the experiences. The Habanos. Yes. The Maduros. The Riatas. Yeah, the uh, San Andreas. <laughs> oh, On the McAuliffe. Medallia. The a. I mean, dude. And then the you got the A. You're, you, you're smoking the bold. Uh, yeah. What's that? The Gordo. Yes. The, the McAuliffe A Gordo. How is it? <sighs> As always, pleasurable. It's a very good-looking wrapper. Pleasurable. This is another one of those 
roller coaster rides that's just so like, oh, I love it. I love it, man. You can't miss it. You can't beat it. Right? He said, I'm, I'm 4 to 42. Yeah, I mean, and you want a Connecticut? Boom, they, they got, got one. You want Nicaraguan, Sumatra, uh, Lajeros. I mean, yep. Matafina. Yes. They've got you covered. And, I mean, whether it's, you know, you're smoking cigars with some buddies at a I was going to say picnic, but I guess the barbecue <laughs> sounds a little manlier. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, and then you're having a celebration. Your daughter's getting married. Yeah. Grab yourself a Grab couple of reserves. reserves. You know what I mean? Not even just splurge, but you splurging on quality. Right. You That's know, what you, you passing oof. out quality to, to the people at that wedding. And they're going to look at I you was like, talking wow. about for myself, but hey, no, good bro. for you. No, passing bro. them out. That's what you do. You yeah. set that bar so high that everybody behind you, they're like, man, we got to find some McCallus for this. Because <laughs> he, he gave out Riatas. Right. No, no. <laughs> That's what I would give. Reserve us. Nah, I'd give out the Riata. I had a Riata earlier today yeah, when yeah. we were watching the football yeah, game. Yeah, I know good it was smoke. good. Wasn't it? Oh, it was good. <laughs> I know it was. So, uh, and if you'd like to become a McAuliffe ambassador look down the show notes there's a link take you over there you'll get your own challenge coin with your own number on it you know we're past 10,000 yeah because uh our new guy said he got his but it wasn't there so he knows but his number was 9,000 and something so he said I know it's out there somewhere and here is the coin is that mine or yours yours oh 298 yeah mine is placed in a case because the number is so lower than 298. Dude, you're almost half of what I am. That's <laughs> crazy. But anyway, look down the show notes. Become a McAuliffe ambassador. They they treat their brick and mortars, their consumers, oh. and their ambassadors special. Yes. And so become part of that family. Yes, sir. And then one of our newest sponsors. Talk about it. No, not one of our. Our newest sponsor is Tabanero, Tabanero Cigars down from Ybor City. And you got Yonko down there just killing it. The dude had a dream and he opened up his own cigar factory and started hiring hiring yes. Cubans that had been in Cuba rolling cigars, and now they're rolling cigars for him. And I can tell you that these guys roll quality. quality. Yes. Dude, every quality. single one of them I've had, the draw is impeccable. And he even told me they test draw every single cigar. That's perfect. I mean. That's perfect. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you... Dude, you know a tight draw is just my <laughs> biggest irk. Hey man, that's a, that's a fight, man. Yeah, it's like, dude, I'm so done with that. Yeah. You don't have that with Tabanero mm-hmm. cigars. And the construction of the burn, a nice, pretty burn line. And, you know, the the Connecticut, dude, I've been all over that Connecticut with coffee in the morning. Yeah. It starts out with a spice, like right, right in your face, face. Yeah. and then it just... Like slides down the creamy slide into euphoria. <laughs> I mean, it's like, dude, that, I like that. is a I stick. Like and then I was drinking it. Well, I was drinking it with my uh, was Brazilian with, dark roast. Was I was drinking. smoking it. <laughs> but Jay told me he smoked it with a, a Sumatra coffee, and that's where oh, it's at. I told you Sumatra, man. So I'm. I actually was like, you know what? I'm gonna smoke one with the Sumatra Just because I loved it with the Brazilian. Uh-huh. So I want to check that out and then they have a pretty large line of cigars so i'm looking forward to making my way through all of their line that's where you find your your favorite it's like a whole new journey oh yes and so look down in the show notes and you'll see a link to tabanero cigars click on that go over and see what they got they i can tell you what they do have and that's amazing cigars so uh i and dude i did i tell you i sent uh Kyle and Big Adam both because I had to send them. Uh, I had to send challenge coin yeah. to a uh, Kyle, and then I had to send because you know that Oliva giveaway, the ashtray and the yeah. travel humidor. Mm-hmm. So I put both of them Tabanero cigars on their package, ah. and Kyle was like, "Dude, straight up, that was a great cigar." Cool. And Adam was the same. Cool. So make sure you go check them out. We appreciate the sponsorship from those guys. And so you had something that you wanted to bring up before we get into some other shenanigans. So it go was, ahead. There was a story that I saw and read, and it said, Samuel Adams' new beer is so strong it's illegal in 15 states. Wow. 15 states. Is Texas one of them? Nope. I didn't think so. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> for it to be illegal in Texas, it has to be something. <laughs> it has to be something that, you know, would have been uh, illegal before the prohibition. <laughs> right. It, it, it's like, is the stopper or the beer can have a grenade attached to it? Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, Sam Adams every year is known for launching new limited editions, and it's called a Utopia. And this one. that what What's called a Utopia? The beer. That's what this beer's it's called? called a Utopia. Because if you drink two, you'll be in Utopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when we found Dude, out you that drink a four-pack or a six-pack at 26% alcohol. 28%. 28% alcohol. That is crazy. Now, I'm not a beer drinker. Yeah. I'm just, you know, it's not my go-to. I'm more of a bourbon guy, but... I would probably have to try it at <laughs> just 20. Once. Yeah, I just mean, once. you never know. And the states that are illegal in are Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Missouri, Mississippi, Montana, North Carolina, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Carolina, Utah, Vermont, West, West Virginia. Oops. And West Virginia. Huh. <laughs> Notice Texas was not in that group. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh -uh. I mean, we're trying to bring back Tommy guns. So, you know. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah, but, I would try. 28% by volume. Man, I mean, a beer, like, I wonder what kind of flavor it has. You know what I, I mean? And that's where we get me. Does it have a flavor? And if not, then it's just based upon the potency of the alcohol. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what that's your selling point. I, I can get you drunk. I mean, I can get you totally drunk off one beer. But that's not what I'm looking for. Because if I'm a drinker. Yeah, I'm not 16. No, no. I'm, past, I'm way <laughs> hey, past that hey, 16. So, so four 16-year-olds buy a four-pack and they're good. <laughs> they're good. <laughs> they're looking like you in the 72 Chevelle. What was that? <laughs> that was Samuel Adams going Huge. down the road. <laughs> But 28% by volume, man. You, you, you're topping it off, bro. You're topping it off. But that's that's what got Miles like, wow, that's some strong beer. Yeah, I would definitely have to check that out. So the other story that I wanted to bring to the forefront was the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, which is known as STG, uh, ha is coming out with a new cigar called Eagle Rare. Ooh. And they've done this in conjunction with basically General Cigar uh -huh. and uh, the uh, Buffalo Trace Distillery. But, and I don't really find that that interesting. Okay. If I see one, I'll try it. But what I found astounding was that STG owns both General Cigar and Buffalo Trace yeah. Distillery. So they can do what they Dude, want. Dude, <laughs> I mean... I, and you know what? I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of one company owning that many cigar brands, that many whiskey distillery brands. And, I mean, you know, you look at everything that Buffalo Trace makes. Holy crap. You're talking about guys that could potentially work their way into a monopoly if they keep buying up these distilleries and cigar companies. Tell the truth. And I, I think... That's why I'm a big fan of like companies like McAuliffe and Tabanero that they're not these large conglomerates that don't care about the consumer. When you start getting that big, you don't care about the consumer anymore because uh -uh. you have people who invest and they want returns on their investment. It's and not about the consumer. That's all it's about. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's why... I love the brick and mortars, but I also love the the small boutique cigar companies. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Boutiques are where, to me, now are where it's at because you find something different, something new, something pleasurable almost every day. Well, you know what you're getting from the uh, Monte Cristos, the uh, Cohibas. You know what you're getting from them. But when you're able to walk down that, take that journey, starting off with a boutique, boutique, and you get those blessings, those treasures, you're like, man, where is these? Where are these things coming from? Right. And that's the blessing to me. I just, I don't want to be, you know, main, just walking down State Street no more. I want to take these side roads. Yeah. And still get to that destination, but on a side road. Now, and that's what I love about. It. I mean, look at McAuliffe, a side road. But it's a great side road. Oh, dude. It's a great side. You see so much. That journey is so beautiful, man. But the big companies don't do the things uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. that these boutiques like McAuliffe do. At all. Like, At all. I mean, I don't know anyone who supports the brick and mortar more than McAuliffe. Nope. Nope. And 
dude, when these big conglomerates come into your cigar shop, they're like, this is where we yeah. want our cigars. Yeah. This yeah. is how we want you to assort them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, you don't come into my place <laughs> and Dictating. tell me where I'm going to put the toilet paper. Yeah. Well. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I don't want it on the roll, I won't put it on the roll. Right. <laughs> I'll put it if on the back on the of the window toilet. Ledge, yeah. <laughs> quick, easy, easy access. access. I don't have to roll. Nope. Yeah. So, you know... I mean, don't get me wrong. I know some of these big guys have some good cigars, yeah. but they also have a lot of shit cigars. <laughs> I mean, that That's, just fill the void. Oh yeah, oh yeah, because they're, they're to that point now. It's, it's got my name on it. They'll buy it. Right. Oh, and, you know, I saw man. another thing. Laura Aurora. Uh-huh. La Aurora. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of not a fan of this. But they actually open their own website to sell their cigars directly to consumers. Cutting out your brick and mortar. I mean, cut. Ooh, man, I mean, why, come on. why am I going to buy come this on. stick at a shop when I can just, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. they're cutting out their brick and mortars, and uh, I'm not a fan of that. Nah, now, I man. know those cigars are available on online websites, yeah, but, but why are you now? As a supplier competing with the person that you're supplying. I don't dig it. It's a new world, man. It's a new world. That's all I can say. So let's talk about, we'll, we'll start with you. The mm-hmm. 49ers won today. Yep. I didn't get to see the game. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have watched it anyway, <laughs> but, you know, uh, trying to be nice. Anyway, that's not my strong suit. But anyway, you know, I'm the drunk, obnoxious host. But uh, anyway, uh, they played the Eagles. Eagles. That's right. And I don't know how good the Eagles are. Are the Eagles any good? Yeah, man, they got a front seven that is uh, amazing. Dude. Really? They got a front seven that's See, amazing. See, I don't know anything about the Eagles. Yeah. So that's why I ask you if the 49ers were any good yeah, they are. to see where they're at. Yeah, they are. Uh, because my thing is we need – we have the defense again, but we need that defense that's going to shut games down. We get so far ahead like with Detroit. We were up in the 40s. But it allowed they allowed them to keep coming back because of mistakes, and here they are. It's almost it made it closer than it actually was. Right. But you know how that is in the NFL because if you allow people to keep standing staying around with you, guess what? They'll look up and win on you, and then you're sitting there looking mad. <laughs> Shut it down. Right. End it. It put it put a stop to it. And that's where we were two to two to three years ago. Right. That defense was outrageous, man. When you get up a good lead, you your defense needs to shut it down, shut it and down. then you need to be able to run the ball. And that's what we and were take doing. Take the clock. But at the end of the day, we lost two more running backs. Yeah, that I'm like, hurts. oh god. Yeah, you told me who the running backs were. I'd never heard of them. <laughs> like, who are these guys? Was that your cousin? Third and fourth string. <laughs> right. Now I mean, they're first and second. Well, I will tell you this. Uh, the Cowboys were three-point underdogs, and I picked them this week. Uh, so that would be yesterday. Uh, well, last week, I yeah. guess. But uh, anyway, I picked them to win based on they were a three-point underdog. And then they actually won the game. Coming through, the defense stood when it needed to. It It did, and I will say this. Uh, I thought the Cowboys benefited from some penalties, which I thought some of them were completely earned and some of them were not. So, you know, you, yeah. you, you take it when you get it yep. because you're not going to turn it down. No, you're not. And, you know, there were some missed calls that could have went the other way too. So, overall, I thought the Cowboys played a really good game. I was impressed. Dak Prescott looks great. I, I told you. And I told I'll tell you. you what, I'll tell you the Two players that impressed me the most today, though, was Pollard <laughs> and Parsons. Oh, because, yeah, because he's playing out of position and, and was a disruptor today. Dude, he was in the backfield every play, probably at least six, seven times, putting major pressure on the quarterback. Did, did, I don't think he ever got to him as far as a no, sack, no. though, but the Cowboys did get a sack in the game. But anyway, you know what? Hats off. They played well against Tampa Bay and got beat, and then they played well today and took a game, and they haven't even played their home opener yet. Not yet. 
You know, you don't want to road. You don't want to come home zero and two. <laughs> you don't even want to be at home zero and two. Well, right, <laughs> so but I mean, two is bad. When you start two games on the road. You hope that you can split one yep, of them. Yep. Yep. And so, anyway, that's going to wrap up this week's show. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, we want to say thank you to our Patreon team, the Lot 'em Up crew. We'll be thank doing you. a Lot 'em Up crew after show yes, here sir. shortly. Yes, sir. Uh, if you want to listen to that, join us. I'm sorry? Perfect. And then uh, if you want to join that, you can uh, check out the after show with the Lot 'em Up crews. And so, anyway, that's going to wrap up this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Keep smoking. Boom.